The village of Koronevo in the Kursk region, where there were no Ukrainian armed forces or military operations, was completely looted. Russian soldiers robbed not only stores and pharmacies, but also the homes of ordinary citizens. During the Kursk operation, the Ukrainian armed forces came very close to Koronevo, but never entered it. The Russian army took up defensive positions there, and most of the local residents were evacuated. When they returned home, people found their houses looted and destroyed. One of the residents filmed the aftermath on video. Apparently, a group of Russian military personnel lived in his house for some time. Everything is turned inside out, thrown out. Cartridges are lying around. Some kind of military hat, camouflage jackets, gloves, Russian army, remains of dry rations, pouches. In short, they ate. Shit didn't worry. There's even a chevron. There are no TVs, no computer, no monitor, nothing. Everything is upside down. The toilet is full of shit. There is no window. They ate, drank and had snacks. The Russian complained. When he left his home, he put up a sign that read, everything is stolen to stop further looting. Residents of Koronevsky district are complaining en masse about looting by Russian soldiers. However, neither the Russian Armed Forces Command nor the local authorities are listening to them. The military continues to settle in civilian homes, rob them and kill domestic animals. Kursk Region Governor Alexei Smirnov reacted cynically to the residents' complaints about looting. He began to insist that this was an information leak by Ukrainian special services. This caused a wave of indignation among the residents of the region. According to them, Russian armed forces soldiers are settling in houses without any embarrassment, claiming that they have the right to do so. The police, including the military, do not respond to complaints and refuse to initiate criminal cases for looting. Earlier, residents of Kursk region complained to Putin about the Russian army of marauders. People write that there was not a single day of Ukrainian army presence in Koronevo, but after the arrival of Russian military in the village, dozens of residential buildings, shops, gas stations and pharmacies were looted. They say there are numerous accounts of men in Russian military uniforms breaking down doors of evacuated homes, taking away belongings and valuables, and shooting dogs to stop them from interfering with the looting. Russian soldiers also steal cars and agricultural equipment that their owners did not manage to take away. It's a или пасмуру темно ничего не видно. Ну все, по вызову, что надо было, что не надо. Вот. Да ладно, уже. Тут он тоже телевизоров нету. Вот валяется от патронов. Упаковки. Сами патроны. Какая-то шапка военных. Перчатки. Ну, штаны там камуфляжные. Куртки, я не знаю, какие-то у меня чего новые были, блядь. Вот. Перчатки. Вот. Армия России. Я не был пиздоболом. Остатки от сухпак пайков. Вот тут подшумки. Да, плов поставляли тут армейский. Короче, жрали, срали. Не тужили. Вот он. Шеврон. Вот тут сухпайков. Ну, вот тут. Димки на это хоккейное подосовали защиты, но все повывернули. Врач вывернулся, все вернул. Телевизоров нету, компьютера, монитора нету, ничего нету. Это все разобрали, еще и чужое притянули. Интерьючий в комнате тут тоже все он вернул. Ну, покажу сейчас кухню. В туалете темно не видно, но полный унитаз. Насратого. Вот я сейчас буду сливать отопление. Вот. Окна нету. Вот тут кушали, пили, закусывали. Как-то так. Ну это вот что за гаражом. Ну, мастерки, шпателя болтаются, стремянка вот, заготовки на заборе, человеку делал на полицейских. А он полки все пустые. Ни инструментов, ни болгарок, ни перфораторов маленьких, больших, ни больших болгарок, ни сварки. Ничего. Все по вытянули. Все, закрыли, закрутили. Домик, домик, милый домик. Таблички он все спижено повесил. Russia's war losses in Ukraine have sharply increased, 
with Ukrainian troops killing 1,460 enemy soldiers over the past 24 hours. The latest figure brought Russia's total combat losses to 696,410 since the beginning of a full-scale war, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In a statement published on Telegram app on Friday, the General Staff also revealed Russia's losses in terms of military equipment. Thus, Ukrainian troops destroyed dozens of Russian equipment, including six more tanks as well as 20 armored combat vehicles during the hostilities in the past day alone. Overall, Ukrainian troops have destroyed 18,470 armored vehicles, 20,039 artillery systems, 369 planes, 329 helicopters, 18,088 operational tactical UAV and other military hardware and equipment during the full-fledged invasion by Kremlin in February 2022. Meanwhile, Russian sources reported today that Russian troops have captured Leonidovka, Novokrenka and Shaktorsko villages in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. In addition, Russian troops have advanced and captured the settlements of Selodovo, Gornyak, Tsukarino, Leonidovka and Izmolovka in Donetsk region, according to Russian media reports. It should be noted that Russia has stepped up attacks in Donetsk region in recent days. There have been multiple reports about Russian forces advancing in this direction of the front line. Russia's resources in the war against Ukraine are being exhausted at a rapid pace and a geopolitical catastrophe awaits the country. Russian propagandist and Z patriot Maxim Kalashnikov made this statement. He assured that the Russian Federation does not have the resources for a long war. That is why the Kremlin is trying to persuade Ukraine to suspend military operations. It is clear that the initial goals of the special military operation are already unattainable. That's it. Opportunities have been missed. And now the goals of the special military operation seem to be changing. A demand has been made from Moscow, an end to the war, a ceasefire with the conclusion of a comprehensive security treaty with NATO, finally on Ukraine, and so on. Kalashnikov said. He complained that the Russian leadership lives in illusions and is leading Russia down the Soviet path of disintegration. Don't tell us that we can still wage war for years, that everything is reliable and stable. No, right now the RF's feet are hanging over nothing. They are on thin ice and below is an abyss, an abyss. Our leadership should understand this and if they don't, then it's a completely different story. What is beginning now, I feel like I am in an analogue of 1988 to 1991. A new geopolitical catastrophe is threatening, complained the Z propagandist. Putin's Russia, which has declared itself the successor state of the Soviet Union and said this was the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century, has every chance of repeating the fate of the Soviet Union. When in December 1979 an 80,000 Soviet army invaded Afghanistan, Things seemed to be going according to plan, but it soon became clear that capturing cities and several roads did not mean conquering the country. Armed resistance unfolded more and more. The whole country hated the occupiers and they responded accordingly, responded to the mass killings of civilians. Soviet aircraft and artillery wiped out towns and villages along with their inhabitants and shootings and torture took place at every turn. At least one million Afghans died during the Soviet intervention, but this did not break popular resistance. The free world was outraged by the barbaric Soviet attack on an independent state and the horrific crimes against Afghan citizens. The attitude towards the Soviet Union, already not very friendly, became openly hostile. 65 countries, including the United States, Canada, Germany, Japan and even China, boycotted the Summer Olympics in Moscow. The United States banned supplies of grain and machinery to the Soviet Union. Russia's war against Ukraine is in many ways similar to the Soviet war in Afghanistan, but there are many differences, and these differences do not favor the invaders. In that war, Ukrainians fought in the occupying army, and now they are defending their state from aggressors. Other former republics of the USSR, now independent states, are no longer fighting for Russia. Instead, Moscow uses primarily mobilized troops from Kalmykia, Buratia, and Dagestan as their cannon fodder in Ukraine. 